and welcome. You're at the Appian 23.3 product announcement webinar. My name is Malcolm Ross, Senior Vice President of Product Strategy. I'm joined here today by Pat Camillo, Senior Manager for Appian at Market, Juliana Kutch, Senior Product Manager, Tian Bu, Senior Product Manager, Peter Lewis, Senior Product Manager Level 2, and of course, April Schupel, our Senior Product Evangelist. And we're going to be walking you through all of today's content to learn about the latest and greatest features of Appian 23.3. But before we begin, I'd like to announce a few exciting events we have coming up in Q3, Q4 of this year, the first of which is going to be taking place in a variety of cities across Australia. So mark these dates, October 10th in Brisbane, Australia, October 12th in Adelaide, Australia, October 17th in Melbourne, Australia, and October 19th in Sydney, Australia. These are going to be our regional Appian Forum events across all of Australia. Hope to see you there. It's a great way to connect with the regional practitioners of the Appian platform and learn about the latest capabilities and get hands-on with the Appian product. So you can follow the link in our pop-up offer to register now. But if you happen to live in the other side of the hemisphere, of course, we have another conference for you at Appian Europe. Now mark this calendar date in London, UK on November 15th, 2023. So we're going to be hosting the annual App in Europe conference again in central London. You'll love the location. It's right off from Paddington Station at the Hilton in downtown London. And of course, to learn more, check us out again at appineurope.com or follow that pop-up offer right now to learn more about our upcoming App in Europe conference. And finally, those of you in the Washington, D.C. area... We're happy to announce again the annual Appian Government Conference. This is going to be on November 29th at the Capital One Hall in Tysons, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. This is a great conference if you're in the Washington, D.C. or in the public sector or government market to learn about all the capabilities coming forward in the Appian product, such as our government acquisition suite, our new case management offering coming to, to, coming to light for the public sector, as well as learn how other public sector agencies and government agencies are applying the Appian product to accelerate citizen services. So again, follow that pop-up offer right now to check out the Appian government agenda and conference coming up. And to kick us off, I'm going to jump over to Pat Camillo. Now, Pat Camillo, of course, has been with Appian for a number of years. And Pat's going to walk us through an exciting update with the overall Appian app market by announcing the App Market Solution Awards. Now, before I pass it over to Pat, I'd like to simply thank all the many partners and contributors we have the Appian app market. It is so valuable to get your contributions there. What you deliver in there through pre-built solutions and pre-built components and plugins really accelerates the time to value and extends the capabilities of all of our customers to solve their most pressing process automation challenges. So Pat, over to you to introduce the Appian app market solution award winners. Thanks, Malcolm. This year, we reviewed more than 75 qualifying solutions built on the Appian AI Power Process Automation Platform by our most innovative and transformative partners. After an extensive review process, we selected four ad market solutions that stood out from the pack. They were evaluated to, to ensure they have high potential business impact with a defined and robust go-to-market approach for a large total addressable market. Solutions were required to be recently listed or updated to effectively make use of the newest Appian features. Preferential consideration was given to solutions with proven successful implementations in production. So without further ado, I will reveal each award winner. The 2023 Ad Market Solution Awards winner for cross-industry value is Procurement 360 by Zebia Apshino. Procurement 360 is a game-changing solution for transforming the procurement process. Seamlessly integrating data from multiple processes and systems, it offers an unparalleled experience in handling purchases requests, quotes, orders, and invoices. Powered by Appian, Procurement 360 solution delivers exceptional performance. Zebia Abshino won the Cross Industry Value Ad Market Solution Award because they're one of Appian's most prolific and successful partners known for their solutions-oriented approach, Procurement 360's applicability across industries and resonance with target audiences have been exceptional, and their joint go-to-market investments, especially creative collateral production, have impressed Appium, customers, and prospects. To learn more about Procurement 360, click the link to head to the Appium ad market and schedule a demo today. The next category is Execution Excellence, and the winner is Ignite's Government Grants Management Solution. 
This is a powerful solution that enables federal agencies to efficiently fund and manage societally beneficial programs. It replaces outdated custom systems, creating a streamlined and user-friendly experience. The solution's seamless integration with financial systems and federal platforms boosts fund utilization, grant coordination, transparency, and reduce technology barriers. Government Grants Management offers end-to-end -end grants management, automatic budget creation, and flexible business rules. Ignite earned the Execution Excellent Ad Market Solution Award because they have a proven track record of success with government grants management and a strong pipeline of opportunities, and Ignite's solution execution showcased Appian differentiators enhancing market impact. To learn more, schedule a demo via the ad market. For the next category, Business Impact, our winner is the Knowing Your Business Partner Solution by PwC. KYBP offers a comprehensive platform to manage critical risk when engaging with external partners. Its modular approach allows customizations to address specific challenges, including financial stability, flexibility, integration, and transparency issues. The solution includes partner profiling, risk assessment, automated mitigation plans, intelligent documentation, continuous monitoring, and transparent reporting. PwC won the Business Impact Ad Market Solution Award because they combined their unique third-party risk management expertise with Appian's platform capabilities, creating a competitive solution applicable across industries and geographies. Also, PwC's successful business development efforts convinced leading global organizations to deploy their application, delivering real business value, and they have an active pipeline of globally recognized accounts. Discover KYBP by PwC on the ad market. And finally, the Industry Disruptor category winner is Yexel Aviation Grand Handling Solution. The aviation industry faces critical challenges in optimizing flight operations and profitability. With 21% of flights experiencing delays, airlines incur significant costs and ground handling teams play a crucial role in ensuring timely turnaround. The aviation ground handling solution leverages configurable workflows and real-time data to optimize operations, offering insights and analytics for informed decisions. This solution optimizes processes, enables effective communication, reduces expensive, and enhances passenger experience. Yexel won the Industry Disruptor Ad Market Solution Award because they show a strong traction in the new market and impress us with the solution's global relevance in a growing industry with an effective execution of Appian capabilities and Yexel's go-to-market focus on key target accounts and determination through proactive outreach particularly stood out. To learn how to use it, go to the ad market and schedule a demo today. Congratulations to all the winners and thanks to all of our amazing partners who are growing their businesses and providing value for our customers by listing their powerful, scalable business solutions on the Appian ad market. Not only this webinar reached thousands of users quarterly, but our winning partners will also receive physical awards and additional promotion across Appian community, our newsletters, our corporate social media channels, and more. Get in touch with us by emailing adMarket at Appian.com to learn how to take your ad market listen to the next level and growth with Appian. Back to you, Malcolm. Thank you, Pat, and thank you to all the contributors on the Appian app market. Your contributions really accelerate everyone's innovation goals. Now let's move on to Appian's 2023.3 release, which is the third release for 2023 and scheduled for release here in August. This, of course, is the second to last release with another release you should expect coming up in November for 23.4. But let's get right into Appian 23.3. And again, the GA version of this is gonna be August 18th. On that day, our cloud customers can choose their upgrade dates as well as those self-managed customers can download the Appian installer for 23.3 on August 18th. So look for it then. Now, before we jump in, to communicate our vision really is bring an AI-powered process automation to bear on all aspects of your business, allowing you to design automate and optimize end-to-end -end business processes using now the power of AI with great additions like our AI skill designer in 23.2. And of course, we're gonna break down the conversations here today in these major segments with data fabric, automation, total experience and process mining, 
all supported by AI-powered architecture and low-code design, which is enterprise-grade to meet your mission-critical business needs. Now, we're going to kick off today specifically really focusing in on the AI-powered attribute. And I'm happy to introduce the new capability of Appian, which is the Appian AI Copilot capabilities. This leverages generative AI with a large language model to dramatically accelerate the development of interfaces and to come in future releases, many more aspects of the Appian software. Now you may have saw a preview of this at Appian World coming up. And we're very excited to announce the initial GA release of the Appian AI Copilot. Now, of course, where you'll access the Appian AI Copilot in the first iteration will be in the Appian Interface Designer. This is going to allow you to leverage generative AI to automatically read fillable PDF documents to dynamically and generatively uh, build interfaces automatically. So let's actually see this in action inside the Appian Interface Designer. Now, as I swipe over to the Design Time Console, I'm going to go ahead and launch a brand new interface here. And from here, this is where we're going to be able to access the AI Copilot. So I'll go ahead and call this this AI Copilot uh, Pilot Demo, just like that. Hit Create. As we do, we always do our security checks and gen generate the object. And then from here, you're going to see a brand new thing in the upper right-hand corner where I'm going to engage with the AI Copilot. From here, I can start to drag and drop maybe those specific uh, documents I want to leverage inside of here. So the document, I'm going to give it a particularly challenging document here, which is going to be this one. And this is a real world document. If you happen to live in the state of Arizona and you want to apply for a hunting permit and license, this is the form you need to fill out. So this is a great example. This is not necessarily a fillable PDF, but this is a readable PDF. So you see the information here can be readable. So you want to make sure you have this type of PDF document for which we can then introspect and use a large language model to read all the text. Use also Appian's document understand capabilities to understand all the data types and types of fields we're looking for, and then generate that entire model for us. So let's go ahead back over, and I just want to now drag and drop that application form right into the interface here. So and there we go, now it's generating that entire interface. Now as you can see, it's building that UI dynamically. So it's actually reading all the fields, identifying the key value pairs, and identifying the data structure behind it to make sure we align the right UX component with each component. See some additional instructions there on the right hand side it says, do I want to actually also use a large language model to generate some human readable instructions about the intent and how to fill out this form? So go ahead and hit yes. Say generate some instructions as well. And you'll see an instruction box going to appear over on the right hand side that will allow me to then offer those instructions. So there's the AI generated summary. And there we go, it continues to build out. Pretty impressive considering I gave it, if we go back to that original form, we see some pretty complex structure here. We have like applicant A, applicant B, applicant C, applicant D, some different interesting ways of capturing date time. So you see month, month, day, day, year, 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 all in individual fields. Well, they correctly translated that to a specific date picker inside of here, as well as the ability to draw that signature, identified, hey, there is a sign on the line below. So we do want to capture signatures. So it appropriately selected that signature as well. As we go down, interesting thing as well, we have some other residency information. So let's see how it captured that. So here identify the residency data and other type of information we need, such as the hunting, hunting, fishing, picking out all those fields. And now it's moving on to the applicant B box. So successfully identified that entire applicant A section. And then finally, it's identifying the applicant B section. Now, like any artificial intelligence, generative AI, it's going to be pretty good, but not maybe exactly what you want. So this is why we pair our AI capabilities inside the Appian Interface Designer. This is going to allow you to have all the controls of the native interface designer to refine, modify, adjust, apply your own styling templates, and make this work for you. But it's going to be a huge time accelerator in the generation of any PDF document into an Appian Interface using this large language model structure capability. And let's go ahead and just let this finish as it builds the rest out. Now as this finishes as well, you know, one of the amazing things that we've done here is really also combine the AI capabilities with the ability to real-time validate sale. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the Appian interface building, 
you know getting that nesting right, the function names, the expression names, it's all really important to make sure you have a interface that's not going to generate any errors. So what we've done is also done additional training on the artificial intelligence to teach it the syntax and structure of the entire sale environment. So it knows exactly how to use date times, it knows exactly how to use all the proper form structures, and always when you build this, it's going to generate an interface that doesn't error out in that case. It's going to be a good first iteration of a valid interface right off the cuff in an initial take inside of that. Now it looks like it's working on the applicant D, so almost done, iterating through all the individual fields. So here it's kind of uh, taking its time to basically make sure it validates everything. So it does a very thorough job to go through again every single one of these objects to make sure you have everything down right and to validate that form as I'm generating it inside the environment. But you can imagine here I have several dozens of fields, different field types all laid out. This is just a huge time saver in the auto generation of these interfaces and giving me a baseline to start from. Uh, as it builds out that entire application interface for me. And it looks like it's done. So now we have a fully functional interface. And of course, it's right here inside the interface designer. So if something didn't quite work out the way I want it, I have that full ability to say drag and drop and move things around, adjust the fields as I so need. I can undo that change if I want to. So it's a regular appian interface designer. But now with every single field laid out, ready for me to fine tune this, to make sure it works for my specific needs. And as well, I can work, optimize this for different formats using the full power of the interface designer to make this work in a specific format, such as on mobile devices, tablet devices, and taking that PDF document and instantly digitizing it. Now, this is does leverage a large language model. So let's talk about how to enable this feature inside your Appian system. So this is going to be a bit of an opt-in capability because it does require a license key to the Azure OpenAI service. So to turn this feature on, once you get the 23.3 release, you're going to want to go to the admin console. You'll see in, under integration there, it says AI services. So under AI services, you'll see three different options here. We have Appian, Stopping and Extraction. We have that native integration still with Google Cloud Document AI, as well as now this new addition to 23.3, which is the Microsoft Azure Open AI service. So to enable this feature, you need to have this service enabled. You're going to sign up independently for the Azure OpenAI service and insert your specific key information inside of here. This is going to allow you to have a private AI service. It's going to be your dedicated Azure OpenAI service that works with this Appian environment, so it's not going to go into the shared pool of public AI, and confidently use that to enable the AI Copilot features in the larger Appian platform. So great feature. Again, I'm sure there's tons of questions. So feel free to continue to write those questions in the Q&A section of the webinar. We'll try to address those at the end of the session. And also stay tuned for future updates as we get to release any additional features around generative AI in the overall design experience in our 23.4 and subsequent releases in 2024. And of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg for Appian 23.3. And to help me out to go through the rest of the content, I'm going to introduce the speaker, which is Juliana Kutch, who is our senior product manager, who will be talking about our total experience capabilities inside the 23.3 release. Over to you, Juliana. Thanks, Malcolm. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to introduce you to some awesome enhancements to all your Appian experiences, mobile sites, and portals. But first, let's talk about the interfaces that power these experiences. We're continuing our mission to give you versatile components for your interfaces. You find that grids, images, checkboxes, radio buttons, and billboard layouts are now more adaptable than ever. With this release, your users can quickly scan a grid for relevant details by highlighting cells based on the information that matters most. When you apply different colors to represent intensity based on custom thresholds, you can transform your read-only grid into a heat map and easily spot trends in your data. We're adding new image sizes so you can fine tune your interface compositions. The new options include those, include those in between values. When small too small, medium is too big, you can now use something like small plus. You can now add spacing between the options on your checkboxes, radio buttons, and card choices to make your forms look more visually appealing. 
For those of you who want to make sure the important part of the billboard image is always visible, you can now set vertical and horizontal media positions. For example, you could ensure that the top right corner of your billboard is always visible. We also have a brand new horizontal line component to help improve interface organization and composition. You can now add a horizontal line to your interface and adjust the padding around it to create the perfect look. This horizontal line is responsive, making your interfaces look great on screens of any size. Now that we covered the UI component enhancements that will help you create great looking interfaces, let's talk about how to deliver these experiences to your users, starting with mobile. With this release, we're making offline tasks on iOS devices just as easy as working with online tasks. Users can save a draft of their work as frequently as they'd like, without having to stop what they're currently working on. We also have exciting enhancements to sites with page groups. Adding more pages in the last quarter's release was just the beginning of our navigation improvements for Appian sites. With this release, we're introducing sleek and modern page groups, which allow you to easily configure secondary navigation by grouping pages in a drop-down menu. Not only do page groups allow you to put more information at your users' fingertips, but organizing your pages into logical, intuitive groups help your users quickly and efficiently find what they need. Setting this up is very easy. I go to the site's designer, and as long as I have at least one page, I can click to add page group. I'll call it cases and select an icon. After I save the group, I am able to start adding pages to it. I'll add another page and see that it's part of the cases group. Now I go back to my site and I can see my cases drop down with the grouped pages. Moving on to non-authenticated experiences and portals. You can now use URL parameters to pass information to your portal. This allows you to link to a specific case, show a grid with preset filters, and more. We know how important security is to you. That's why we made all URL parameters encrypted by default. But don't worry, we're keeping things flexible. If you need to use plain text URL parameters, you can simply opt out of the encryption. Ready to show off that portal? Use the new abank URL for portal function and portal bank domain to create links to your portal. For a quick demo, let's go to the process modeler where I configured a URL parameter. I'll save and republish this model. And now let's run a test. I'll receive an email with a link, and when I navigate to that link, I see that my encrypted URL parameter is shown on my browser. Your portals will now automatically send an email alert the moment a portal user encounters an error. The email alert goes to all portal object administrators for quick triage and links right to the portal object, so you can quickly diagnose and resolve the issue. We also made portal publishing automatic based on environment updates. After your environment is upgraded or hotfixed, we'll automatically apply those updates to your published portals, ensuring they immediately reflect any security updates or performance enhancements. As you can see, it's been an exciting release for our total experience offering. We hope you leverage all, all of these to deliver delightful, intuitive, and great-looking experiences to your users. Thanks for having me today, and now back over to you, Malcolm. Thanks, Giuliano. These are some great additions to our total experience and user interface capabilities. Now I'd like to transition over to our process automation topic with introducing Tian Bu, Senior Product Manager for Appian, to cover all of our new automation capabilities. Over to you, Tian. Thanks, Malcolm. I'm thrilled to be here today to introduce all the incredible enhancements to our process automation capabilities. Starting with AI skills, we've made the development experience faster and more intuitive. You'll now pick your skill type early on, allowing you to explore all capabilities before naming the object and adding a description. We've also made it easier to navigate model training results within the document and email classification AI skills. For instance, we've updated the styling of the model training card by improving the confusion matrix layout. We've also moved metrics navigation to a tab on the left-hand side, and we now clearly display all of your document or email types across the top. Training new models has also become easier than ever. Now you can start training a new model based on a previously trained model. 
Your new model will have the same document or email types and training data that you added before, which saves you time when you want to add more types, change your training data, or remove training data. To give you confidence that a model is ready for production, you can now test a model using additional sample documents or emails and view the results right in the AI Skill Designer. This quick verification gives you a sense of how the model will classify documents and emails in the real world without having to build a process model, saving you time. Instead, you can see the model in action and gain confidence that it works on a small number of documents or emails before using it in a process. This release also expands the availability of the document classification AI skill. Customers in unsupported regions can opt in to use this feature and choose which region their data is sent to for processing. With this enhancement, we put the decision in your hands. After you review compliance to ensure the AI skill aligns with your organization's security requirements, all you need to do is then work with Appian support to enable the document classification AI skill. Moving on to Appian RPA, I'm excited to announce some incredible improvements that make it even easier to use robotic process automation in your applications. To begin with, you can now create, manage, and deploy robotic tasks directly from Appian Designer, streamlining your RPA workflow. For instance, like other design objects, security for robotic tasks is now handled via groups and role maps. Next, we've introduced Robot Pools, a new design object that enables you to group robots based on their unique roles and capabilities. When you're creating or managing a robotic task, you can choose the appropriate robot pool responsible for executing that task. Any available robot in the pool can run the robotic task, which will help to distribute the workload across many robots. You can include these robotic tasks and pools in deployment packages, which means that you can now deploy your RPA objects along with the rest of your application objects, giving you greater confidence with your deployments. This is going to save you time and make it easier for you to get started with RPA. Also in this release, we're introducing the Operations Console. Starting with robot management, this operations console originates from our desire to empower operations managers with the ability to monitor and control operations from a single point, stay informed, and make data-driven decisions at a glance. This is the first step towards a broader vision of a new dedicated hub for operations, specifically intended for business users, with a continued focus on making operational oversight more effective and straightforward. This release, we're helping you speed up and simplify your browser-based robotic tasks by introducing additional low-code actions. For instance, we've included a new action that will enable you to accomplish more advanced tab switching. This will allow your robotic tasks to seamlessly navigate between tabs, even for complex scenarios like when there are dynamic titles or tabs without titles. Plus, we've included new browser configurations that allow you to manage your download directories and disable notifications. And lastly, we've made the debugging experience more powerful. Not only can you open robotic subtasks in separate tabs, allowing you to debug at a more granular level, you can also edit variable values in debug mode, making testing robotic tasks more efficient than ever. These enhancements are truly exciting as they will make RPA even more accessible and powerful for your business. For our users that are already leveraging Appian RPA, we have several resources available, including a comprehensive transition guide in our documentation to support you through these changes. Now that you've heard all about these capabilities that make working with RPA even faster and easier, I'll show you how it all fits together. So let's dive right in. Here, we have an existing application that automates bank requests. We currently have a process where a task is manually assigned to an analyst. This task is time-consuming, repetitive, and prone to error, but unfortunately, the system that the analyst has to interact with is just too old to support APIs. This is a great opportunity to replace this human task with a robot instead. So that's what we're going to do today. To leverage RPA, here's what the flow would look like. First, we'll go to the Operations Console, where we'll create a robot that will be used to build and test on. To do this, we'll simply click Create. 
fill out all the required fields, and download the installer. We'll then follow the guided wizard to finish the installation, and now we have a robot that's online and ready to run some robotic tasks. You'll then create a robot pool. Remember, robot pools are used to manage and organize the sets of robots that you assign your robotic tasks to run on. They behave pretty similarly to Appian groups, except imagine that instead of adding and removing users, you're adding and removing robots to your robot pool. Now, there's many different ways you can group robots for your robot pools. For instance, you can create pools based on the common applications installed on these robots, or you could create pools based on factors like organizational structure. In our case, I'll just name our pool for the use case, give it a description, and review the security roadmap. Once we get into the pool configuration page, I'll go search for the robot that we just created in the operations console and add my robot member to this pool. Now that we've finished setting up the robot pool, we'll navigate back to the main application page and create a robotic task to define the series of actions that we want our robot to perform. I'll give this task a name, description, and then assign it to the robot pool that I just created so that this task knows to run on any of the robots that were added to my robot pool. We'll then quickly review the security role map. And once the task has been created, you can do your usual development activities to construct the steps that the robot would need to perform. For instance, you can start recording the steps that mimic what your analyst would have typically had to do manually, or you can even reference another robotic task as a robotic subtask, which helps with quicker and more modular development. You can also leverage typical tools like dependence and precedence to understand which objects are used and where, which will help when you make changes or need to deploy. After the initial design, you can even kick off your robotic task directly from this designer. And assuming that everything looks good from here, you'll then go to your process model, update your robotic task smart service to call your robotic task integration, and then you're done with development. If you want to deploy these objects up to the next environment to test out your changes, you can do so using any of the existing Appian deployment methods, including compare and deploy. Here you'll see that you can benefit from change statuses, missing precedence checks across your app, and even resolve them in flight as usual. Here we'll just add this missing robotic subtask to our package, inspect again, and then deployment is as simple as clicking deploy on this page. As you can see, you can deploy RPA with confidence alongside the rest of your application objects. And that is the beauty of this unified RPA experience. I hope that this demo was helpful for you to visualize how simple it truly is to incorporate RPA into your workflows. We can't wait to see what you build with these new Appian automation capabilities. Please reach out to your account executive to learn more about the complimentary automation kickstart program for both RPA and IDP. Our automation experts will help you provide assessments and ROI analysis to identify and validate your use cases. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Malcolm so that you can learn more about all the other great features coming to the platform with this release. Back to you, Malcolm. Thanks, Tian. And of course, our process automation capabilities wouldn't be complete without our focus on our data fabric architecture, an important part of building composite applications that span many systems. To share us more about what's new with Appian 23.3 in our Appian data fabric, I'd like to invite Pete Lewis, Senior Product Manager Level 2, to share all of our updates with this release. Over to you, Pete. Hi, and thanks for the intro, Malcolm. I'm Pete Lewis, a Senior Product Manager 2 here at Appian. I'm really excited today to discuss our latest features for our data fabric. Let's take a look. In 23.3, we're excited to introduce another new feature for using records to update your data. Now, the Write Record Smart Service allows you to update a base record and its related records together in a single operation. This means that if you need to update a customer, their orders, and line items, you can simply pass in all of the data together and Appian will take care of the rest. Writing related data is available for both one-to-many and one-to-one relationships. To begin writing related data, 
Just go to your core record type and set your configuration to allow or not allow writing related data. Then, when you write the data, just provide the base record and related records in a single variable, and Appian will write them all at once. Another great improvement along with this feature is that now Appian identifies which fields or records have been modified and only writes the data that has changed. This allows us to be more efficient and also reduces accidental overwrites of data. This functionality is available both in a process model and in an expression using the abang write records function. And really, this means that we're continuing a records first approach. It's easy now to build an entire application using only records. Because we want to emphasize using records in your app, we've also made it easier to get the data that you want to update by introducing a new function called abang query record by identifier. This function makes it easy to grab a single record by just providing the record type and the identifier. Plus, the query can return up to 100 related records through each one-to-many relationship, allowing you to get all the relevant information from a single base record. And we didn't stop there. You can also retrieve these 100 records per relationship in your record views and actions using rvbang record. This functionality is available on all new record types and existing record types using an update banner. In combination with the improvements to the write records node, this makes it easy to update all the related data for your record through a related action. Last release, we introduced record events, which allow you to easily capture key milestones for your records. Now we've expanded this to determine not just users, but also automations. Simply select the field to store your automation type and choose the relevant automation in the process model. Not only does this provide easy configuration in your process, it's great for using process mining too, since now we can use this additional context to identify which activities can be automated. As you continue to use more and more of our data fabric features, it's essential that you're able to use high volume data sources too. We're pleased to say that we have again doubled the number of rows you can use in each of your synced record types from two to four million. And as part of enabling more use cases, we've also increased the number of queries that can be run concurrently using our real-time stores, which serve queries against synced records. Customers using larger cloud sites will automatically have capacity for more queries, and self-managed customers can also choose to increase their query capacity. This allows for higher throughput of queries overall, while still ensuring good performance. A couple of updates on support for data sources too. In 23.3, we now support new versions of several databases, including Amazon Aurora MySQL 3, Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL 13, and PostgreSQL 14. In addition, our codeless data modeling now supports Amazon Aurora MySQL and PostgreSQL to create database tables from scratch through the Record Type Designer. Now, to go into a bit more detail, I'd like to show a brief demo of data fabric improvements from this quarter. The improvements we've made now make it easy to pass information about related records together and update them all at once too. For example, let's take a look at a sample customer record that has related locations and personnel. Now, I can query all of this information together and easily update it by passing the customer and its related data together just using RVBang record. Now, suppose I also want to update this data. In the record type designer, I can allow updates to my related records when I modify the customer. Then, looking at a process model, I'm now able to update all of this related data together in a single node. Notice in the setup tab, I just pass in the customer variable, which contains information about both my customer, locations, and their personnel. Not only that, I can also capture an event for when this customer is updated. Let's compare this to a previous version where I updated each of the records individually. Now it's much easier to build and even faster to run. Let's take a look at this in action. If I update the location and add a new contact, my streamlined process quickly and easily updates both records at once. And not only that, 
It can also skip updating any locations I didn't change to make it run even faster. Using the new features available in the 23.3 release, I've now been able to update all of my related data easily and efficiently. Back to you, Malcolm. Thanks, Pete. Now let's continue on with our 23.3 release with the features on our low-code design experience. And we are excited to announce that exports of application packages and applications can be triggered now programmatically via API. So whether it's, an, again, a package or an application, you can export changes via an external system using Appian's native deployment APIs and enhance and store existing deployment APIs and ensure that you have a seamless automated deployment experience from import to export. So now you can orchestrate your exports as easily as you can with your imports, extending your reliable, reproducible, automated pipeline. In addition, starting with this release, all manual and programmatic exports occur asynchronously. Simply close the export dialog and continue other work. Your export will keep running in the background. Check the status of your export any time using the deployment view or wait for the email you receive when your export is complete. Continuing on to our admin, cloud, and support capabilities, we're happy to also announce that in the past, when you search for plugins in the admin council, uh, admin console rather, only plugins that were supported for your environment version or earlier were returned. Now you can see all plugins, even those that are unsupported with your Appian versions, letting you know the Appian version upgrade required before the plugin can be deployed. In addition, to help with the overall health and performance of your Appian Cloud database, we'll enforce a primary key for any MariaDB tables created in new sites. We're working behind the scenes and continuing our mission to provide you with the most reliable and performant cloud database for your applications. And next, Appian Cloud Sites in GovCloud regions configured only private access either via VPN or AWS Private Link can now seamlessly leverage the compare and deploy across connected environments. To enable this for your Appian Cloud environments in GovCloud, create a support case and specify which of your Appian Cloud environments you would like to opt in to enable that feature. And next, of course, when you go into the app, My Appian console in Appian support site, you can now configure default maintenance windows for your Appian Cloud environments, minimizing the need to communicate with Appian support. Simply again, go to the My Appian environment in the support site, choose the individual sites that you're under control, and choose when are appropriate maintenance windows, so you no longer need to uh, coordinate these with the Appian support team directly. Now transitioning to a quick update on our customer success programs and specifically highlighting the Appian Guarantee Program. Now, if you haven't tried an Appian Guarantee Program before, we are opening this up to any customers who haven't tried Appian Guarantee, or if you're a new customer at Appian evaluating the Appian platform, it's the fastest way to turn your idea into an application in just eight weeks for a fixed fee delivery cost. Really provides a risk-free, positive ROI for getting rapid value out of the Appian platform. If you'd like to learn more about the Appian Guarantee Program, I encourage you to check out our website at appian.com. Of course, as well, reach out to your Appian sales rep around eligibility and how the program works for turning your next idea into an application in just eight weeks. And finally, I'd like to transition to April Schupel, Senior Product Evangelist, to cover our Appian community updates. Over to you, April. Thanks, Malcolm. Today, I have a few updates for and by developers. Let's start with the app market. Appian continues to expand our native capabilities each quarter, increasing what's possible with out-of-the-box features. We also give you the power to extend Appian even further with plugins. I'd like to highlight two new connected system plugins we released in June, the Pinecone and Azure Open API Connected System plugins. The Pinecone Connected System makes it easy to build high-performance vector search applications in Appian using large language models. And the Azure Connected System will allow users to utilize the Azure-based OpenAI LLM and exercise increased security over their data. As technology and AI continue to rapidly evolve, our integration SDK makes it easy to integrate your Appian apps with new systems and services. There are hundreds of plugins authored by Appian and our amazing partners currently available on the app market. And with more added all the time, you'll want to make sure you're regularly checking it out. Some other new things for you to check out can be found on Academy Online. Every quarter, we update our online training content to help you dig deeper into features covered in our release webinars. 
As a reminder, completing the release showcase helps you stay up to date with the latest features and maintain your Appian certification. Some content I'd like to highlight are tutorials on parsing Excel files and using Appian RPA's image recognition tools, and courses on creating robotic tasks and designing loops. Our RPA Build From Scratch course has also been updated for 23.3. Along with Academy Online, we offer learning content on our Appian Community YouTube channel. This year, we've been hosting regular Learn With Experts live streams, where I invite special guests to come on and dig deep into a topic. My goal with live streams is to introduce you to people with specialized expertise, such as product managers or architects, and give you the opportunity to participate in the conversation and ask questions. During our last live stream, we discussed how to approach building interfaces and rules to maximize their reusability. The chat was blowing up and we had so much fun talking with those of you who were able to join us. At the end of the live stream, I announced our first community quick build competition to create a reusable calendar component. This Friday, August 11th at 12 p.m. Eastern, we'll be hosting a live stream to go over the results and determine the winner. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future competitions. Speaking of, it's almost time for Appian Europe, meaning it's almost time for another live build challenge. Interested in competing in London on November 15th? We have some exciting things in store with a new reimagined format. Head over to community.appian.com challenges to learn more and apply. The winner will get a free conference pass and hotel stay at our 25th anniversary Appian World next April. One of my favorite things about the Live Build Challenge is being able to show off some of the amazing developers we have in our community. And along those lines, I want to share some developer-generated content. Appian Space, which is run by Harshit and Amit, is full of interesting blog posts. Martin's Low Code Lab is a blog and YouTube channel that offers educational Appian content in Spanish. And over at appian.rocks, you can find the work of Stefan, Sandro, and Marcel, including a book, podcast, and blog. Thank you all for being such great Appian evangelists and sharing your passion for the platform. That's it for community updates. Thanks as always for having me, and back to you, Malcolm. Thank you, April, and thank you everyone for attending the Appian 23.3 product announcement webinar. We look forward to seeing you at the upcoming 23.4 product announcement webinar in mid-November, as well as our mentioned our upcoming conferences in Australia, Europe, and our Appian government conference in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for attending, and we hope to see you then.